With regards to the 120 years of gold mining, it has resulted after South Africa stopped selling uranium for the Manhattan Project, that the uranium is dumped upon the tiling stamps, the gold tiling stamps. There is currently 100,000 tons of uranium on the tiling stamps within the West Rand and Far West Rand. Annually, 24 tons percolate or seep into the groundwater and reaches the Bar River system. Uh, from the point discharges, to, um, uh, 10, uh, 12 tons of uranium and from stormwater, 10 tons. You, uh, 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 historically, they have fought sinkholes with uriniferous tailings. When these mines close, and they will close in the very near future, then the pre-mining flow patterns and volumes of water will be restored, and it will mobilize these uriniferous tailings into our groundwater resources. This shows that there is not only historic legacies, there are current infractions which are not enforced. Uh, in other words, there is no enforcement against non-compliance. This is taken from DRD's gold mine. Uh, but regularly, if there is not a watchdog, and unfortunately the watchdog services have been very cheaply outsourced to civil society, then you can see how slurry, uh, slurry contains tailings, which is toxic and radioactive waste, mixed with discharged water, which is toxic water, how it's being discharged into the environment, and so conveniently a trench was dug into the Bonafontein Sprite where the, the slurry then simply is being discharged. That is from point sources. This shows a, a, a tiling stand in the background. You can see unvegetated, unfenced. It's all against or in contravention of the uh, regulations of the National Water Act number 36 of 1998. When it is run off, it's supposed to be captured in a tow paddock. You notice the tow paddock, but there is such poor house management that their tow paddocks are never cleaned. And so it simply again flows down into the receiving water courses. This also shows bad housekeeping on the part of goldfields. Uh, after I had a directive brought against goldfields for uh, the spillages that had not been cleaned, when they then removed the spillages, the, uh, the pipe was standing this high. So you can imagine the years of contamination. This also is from Harmony. The, that is the uh, tiling stem in the background. It's supposed when there is runoff to be captured in a pollution control dam which ought to be uh, lined so that there is no percolation or seepage. What has happened? There was a breach in the wall that simply allowed that toxic water to flow into, in this case, the Twilupi spread which impacts upon the, um, the Limpopo catchment. I wish to mention that because it, uh, uranium is toxic and radioactive, there were studies commissioned by the National Nuclear Regulator after tremendous pressure had been put upon them, and they then found that 50 of the 47 sampling sites contained radioactive levels almost 100 times above regulatory limits. People are living on this land. The entire Grand Fontaine, Western Area, Carltonville, Kutsum and Kachiso are built on radioactive land. I also wish to mention to you that we are only supposed to be exposed to one millisievert per annum, that is radioactivity. But 50% of those sites contain radioactivity levels of 100 millisieverts per annum. The last uh, paragraph is of significance. What was found is that there is no pathway that can be ignored. For example, because there are heavy metals absorbed or bound to the sediment of the river system of the Bonnefontein Spray, when cattle drink in that water, they churn the sediment. In other words, they disturb the sediment. They swallow those particles, uranium particles. It enters the milk and it enters the, the, uh, the uh, meat and then it also, of course, is absorbed by humans.
The best shows, wherever you see the red, the warm color show radioactivity, you can notice the entire Rijnfontein and Krugersdorp are built and Kachisom are built on radioactive land. What is interesting is they also use stalings from the mines to also, uh, or gravel, to, to, uh, to construct roads. And there you can notice, I hope it will allow me to walk, uh, over here, can you see? That is a road, uh, 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 also reflecting in warm colors because it's a radioactive road. What is of interest too is all the tea houses are being built with bricks made of tilings. So those bricks uh, 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 discharge radon. It's again an exposure pathway which is of great concern. Um, you will also notice that the radioactivity not only enters into milk and meat, but also into crops. Most of the land in that area, uh, the soil is contaminated with heavy metals, and then, uh, 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 especially in the wetlands, and then it enters into the crops. Again, it shows uh, where it's the warmer colors, that is the, uh, the um, radioactivity, uh, radioactive areas, and also in wetlands. Um, this is also as a result of gold mining activity. Um, the background uranium levels in the Klax Kral Dam, which did not receive any effluent from the mine, is one, uh, uh, one uh, milligram per kilogram uranium. In the Andriskutsia Dam, it is 900 milligrams per kilogram. The, the farmers were directed not to allow any uh, watering of cattle or irrigation. The farmers are now going bankrupt. The miners polluted their land, but they pay the costs. Uh, here I wish just to emphasize the Tudor Dam you see over there. The Tudor Dam uh, is a dry or a desiccated dam. It contains, when you measure radioactivity as background, you measure it in becquerels. Uh, it contains between 10,000 and 100,000 becquerels per kilogram that is now in the sediment. Your regulatory limit is 500 becquerels per kilogram. And there is an informal settlement built on the banks of Tudor Dam. They collect their wood from Tudor Dam, they walk through Tudor Dam, and there is not one single face erected or even a warning sign erected. I just wish you to read that. I won't read it myself. Uh, in the case of pathways, you have your airborne pathway, that is atmospheric pollution, you have water pathway, sediment pathway, soil stay on contaminated pathway, uh, a pathway and also uh, um, uh, bioaccumulation in crops. Now, I'm coming now to acid mine drainage. That is now the, uh, the uh, um, relevancy to our um, discussion today. Because we have these elevated levels of heavy metals bound to the sediment of the rivers, there are certain possible or plausible environmental conditions that can mobilize and solubilize these heavy metals. One of these possible environmental conditions is acid mine drainage. Why is this significant? Because in 2002, um, there was an emergency situation, although it was already predicted in 1996. From an old shaft, uh, there emanated an uncontrolled discharge of untreated acid mine drainage. Now, acid mine drainage contains a, a very low pH, or has a very low pH, the same pH as battery acid. Um, the normal pH or acidity in water or alkaline is 7.3. With acid mine drainage, it is 2.2. So it mobilizes and solubilizes all your heavy metals. This has resulted in, for example, because it was first discharged as an emergency measure, into the Robinson Lake. This is the Robinson Lake. It used to be a recreational area. 
to jou die kan thuis uranium levels 50,000 times, 50,000 times above background uranium levels. 